he's going to talk to us a little bit about being homeless now is so active in our community. Please continue to um, tweet, I am Waters, but please welcome Joseph Benson. Good afternoon. It is truly outstanding to see so many faces at this event. You know, Elena, with all the energy that she has, was at one time was thinking that she couldn't fill up the first dining room and look like she, we need another dining room. And uh, as I would tell him at the table, maybe we have to rent out the Reliance Stadium for the second event. You know, uh, one of the things that individuals don't realize that about homeless individual is that we have to remember that they are not nameless. They just happen to be homeless. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Houstonian. I was fortunate enough to graduate from high school here in Houston, received a scholarship, went to college in Virginia, returned to Houston and was trained as a chef at a place called Sharpstown Country Club. And when they had the problems over in Sharpstown and everyone moved out to Fort Bend to Quail Valley, I made the transition to Quail Valley. Then I worked my way across the United States. And when I came back to Houston, I had a catering service where I employed 25 people. But after serving an event for my mom, on my way home, I had a bad car accident. And unfortunately, in the state of Texas, we didn't have insurance back then. And the guy, didn't, he didn't have insurance that had the 18-wheeler truck. So, and I wound up living in Texas Medical Center for two and a half years. I went bankrupt because of the high cost of medicine and wound up on the streets. And because of one of the organizations that Elena served water to, uh, I was rescued and was able to recover. And I'm proud to say that I'm 12 and a half years clean. Yeah. And was fortunate enough to get hired by that organization. I've been working with that company for 11 and a half years. And now I serve as a consumer advocate both here in the city of Houston and across the nation uh, representing the homeless community. And probably my proudest moment has been a board member for I Am Waters. When uh, Elaine M came over and was photographing us and we got a chance to talk and know each other and then she called me back to ask me to be the consumer representative. That was a great honor for me to um, be part of this organization. And once again, I'd like to thank you all for coming out today. It's truly a great organization. Uh, about uh, two months ago, uh, I got, I'm sitting at my desk in my office, and I get a phone call, and I pick it up. Hi, it's Greg Davis. I think, well, how terrific is that? I haven't seen Greg for a while, and I, I haven't spoken to him. Um, so within two or three minutes, he had told me about I Am Waters. And my answer was, yes, I'll do anything I can. Now, I don't say yes to men that easily or quickly. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when Greg Davis calls and asks, and explains the situation, I said yes. Now, uh, objectification, that's what this is all about, and that's a big word and it's a big idea. The properties of an object, objectification, includes the denial of, it, it, it's to treat someone as if there is no need to show concern for the object's feelings or experiences. You can say that about, I'll use myself as an example, as a model, I've, I've gone through that before. Certainly we can say it about the homeless. Uh, an object can be owned or ignored. An object is interchangeable. Uh, when I was uh, when in the modeling business, when you start out, you go on what they call cattle calls and talk about being an object. You go in, you show your photographs, and they say, next, and you just do the best you can. Um, 
An object is an instrument, uh, a tool for one's own purposes. Okay. So, I was the object, and the photographer had me in the surf in Los Angeles. And he said, you know, I'm clinging to a rock, trying to not let it, you know, drag me or the, the water, you know, as it came in and out. But the photographer said, don't look at me. He said, I want you to look that way, you can look that way. He said, but I don't want you to focus on me. So I'm, you know, doing this and struggling and smiling and, you know, making these, you know, and I did finally glance at the photographer. He's off talking to, you know, one of the ad men. You know, it was Saul Leiter. And he was just, you know, he was rewinding his camera like this, just talking. And I just thought, whoa, you know, that, that did not happen often to be treated like an object like that. But it does occasionally happen. Um, many people assume that models have it made. Uh, it does not hurt to have a great set of chromosomes, but we're not in control of that. So uh, I think we're grateful for that. Um, but we don't live in a bubble, and we don't live on a pink cloud. We have thoughts, feelings, soul, you know, heartbreaks. We have depths of despair, and we have the greatest exhilaration. We have the thoughts and feelings of everyone else. You know, what, what we're going through in life. Life is full of bumps in the road. So, um, we might be considered objects, but we have all of, all of what's going on in our hearts and souls. Now, the same thing which is very interesting, is um, homeless people. Um, sometimes we can put words out of our uh, own na naivete and stupidity, really, of uh, looking at a homeless person and thinking, well, they're just desperate, they're depressed, they're, you know, they're not bright enough, they're whatever, uh, whatever words we can put to a homeless person. And um, they also have thoughts and feelings. They have sadness. They have happy days. They have good days, bad days. They have concerns and cares, just like all of us. Oh, gosh, where am I? Joseph, you're coming up soon. In fact, I think it's your turn. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> you know, uh, many folks in society deal with homelessness in the similar ways. The homeless are objective statistics as if they are somehow not subject to the same thoughts, emotions, or feelings as the rest of us. We all have a picture in mind when someone uses the word homelessness. Often, it's a mentally ill person standing on a corner or sleeping on a sidewalk. Although these images is etched into our psyche, it turns out that it does not actually represent the majority of homeless Americans that we have. Hmm. When uh, Greg and Peter came to Los Angeles and did photographs, um, they just wanted me to wear a bright colored t-shirt or just something very casual, and my jeans, whatever, and they showed me photographs of homeless people and that hadn't been particularly styled or dressed, but just they had regular clothes on. The, Peter was doing the photographs, so we, we all looked alike. Um, they had hats on, you know, little baseball caps or whatever, but um, that's what I Am Waters is all about, is just making this slate a blank slate so that we all become one and we all start to care for one, one another. Okay, Joseph. A photo <laughs> serve a dual purpose. First, they deliver a different picture of the homeless to the public, challenging the expectations that everyone in need is something that they are not, a hopeless object instead of promising opportunity. But it turns out that the mere act of photographing someone, making them the center of attention, surrounded by people that are trying to make them look as good as possible, putting them 
in a good light also has a therapeutic effect in a very real way. It actually makes people feel better. Well, that's so important. We're almost wrapping this up, but I Am Water, Waters uses bottles of water and photographs the people as mediums, not as objects, but as mediums for delivering a message. Life's it's you. Okay. <laughs> Life-saving water with a message of inspiration to the homeless when they need it the most. A message of inspiration to the general public that homelessness does not need pity. They need a light and hope. Many homeless women, men, and children are often not in control of their fate. It is a common thing woven through recurring stories of how only a month earlier, the very folks that are waiting in line for food and shelter has been in homes, with cars, in their driveway, kids in school. Well, there's only one more sentence to go here, but before I get to that sentence, I just want to say that um, I have met a lot of interesting people in my life. Um, but I am standing next to a man who has done something greater than I could ever imagine doing. This takes enormous strength, not only to get sober, that's hard enough, but to pick him himself up off the street and now do good for society is I am just, I am in awe, and I am inspired. Thank you.